This video is on negative exponents part two, but before we do some more negative exponents, we need to look at one more basic property, and that is x to the zero equals one. Now this may look strange to you because you're used to thinking of x squared as x times x. You think that the two exponent tells you to write out that x two times. Well, that doesn't make sense with x to the zero, so we need to develop this rule a different way. Take an expression like x squared over x squared. If we use our exponent laws, we keep the base and subtract the exponents and get x to the zero. If we look at this in the old-fashioned way of something divided by itself is 1, we will have this expression, x to the zero equals 1. Anything to the zero power equals 1 except 0 to the zero does not exist because if these x's had been zeros, we would have had a nonsensical exp expression. We'd have 0 squared over 0 squared. We would have been dividing by 0, which is not possible. So anything to the 0 power is 1. All of these equal 1 because they've been raised to the 0 power. Over here, there are some coefficients and negatives to be concerned with. a to the 0, the 0 is only on the a, so that equals 1. But this is 5 times 1, which equals 5. In this expression, same thing, the 0 is only on the 9, it is not applying to the negative. You could think of this being the opposite of 9 to the 0. So 9 to the 0 is 1, but that opposite gives me the negative 1 right there. All of these in parentheses being raised to the 0 power are the same kind of problem no matter how complicated or simplified the inside is. Anything in parentheses raised to the 0 power equals 1. So now we can get back to the negative exponents. The fraction x over a to the negative 1 is going to have to be dealt with, and we need to think about the definition of x to the negative 1. x to the negative 1 means 1 over x to the first. That's what we established in a couple videos ago. So this quantity to the negative 1 means 1 over that quantity. But now we've got this 1 over a fraction, which means division. So 1 over x over a means the same as 1 divided by x over a. Dividing by a fraction, we flip the fraction and multiply. 1 times that just gives us a over x. Now just look at this to here. Don't think about all those steps we had to get there. The x over a raised to the negative 1 took our fraction and just flipped it over. Now technically, to be able to use this expression down here, I would need to think about this in parentheses raised to the positive 1. So this is how we're going to deal with a negative exponent on a fraction. When a fraction is raised to a negative exponent, just flip the fraction and make the power positive, like this. Now this is not a fraction yet, but it's going to be in a second because we're going to deal on the inside of the parentheses first. We established that in a previous video, do inside the parentheses first. So that a to the negative 3 is going to send the a cubed to the bottom. We've just created a fraction. A fraction raised to a negative power, here's where we're going to use our rule. Flip that fraction upside down, and now it's to a positive 2. At this point, we can just use the power property, which tells us to multiply the 2 times each of those exponents, and we get a to the 6th over f to the 8th. Now, if you don't like that method, there's another way to look at it, and that is just to use your exponent laws the way they are written. We can use the power property straight off. Distribute through here, you're going to get a to the 6th, f to the negative 8th. We still have a negative exponent, which we're not allowed to have, so we need to move that negative exponent down into the denominator. And that is a bit quicker than the other method. But it can be dangerous if you don't do well with your sign numbers and if you have coefficients inside the parentheses raised to a negative exponent, which you'll see in a couple minutes. So inside the parentheses here, I notice c to the fourth, that's a positive exponent. That's the only exponent that's going to stay. This, this, and this are all going to swap places. 4 over 8 is a plain old fraction. We're just going to reduce it. So I started by reducing 4 over 8 to get 1 half. Here's my c over 4, which is, or c to the 4th, which is staying, but these other exponents swap positions. Those that were in the bottom came to the top and became positive exponents. This one in the top goes to the bottom and becomes negative. Now we have a's and c's spread throughout here. We need to use two different exponent laws. There we have c to the 4th times c to the 9th. We also have a to the 1st over a to the 4th, so two different rules we're going to use. The 1 over 2 stays. c to the 4th times c to the 9th is the rule that says keep the base and add the exponents. 4 plus 9 gives us 13. 
For the division, what we did a couple of videos ago was to look at the fact that there are more a's in the denominator. So my answer is going to be in the denominator for a, it is to the third power because 1 from 4 is 3. We at least now have a nice neat inside of the parentheses, no negative exponents. Now it's time to deal with the negative exponent on the outside. And what we just said a little while ago is just flip this fraction upside down and make the power positive. Now we can use our power rule and distribute this 3 into the parentheses. Remember that is a coefficient. You have to raise the 2 to the third power. You have to do your 3 times 3 give you a to the ninth, and do 3 times 13, which gives you 39. Now this also can be done the other way. The main reason I do it this way is because of the coefficients and because sometimes people make sign number mistakes. So, so here's the other way. With this, we'll still stay inside the parentheses because that's what order of operations tells us to do. We will still reduce the 4 over 8. But when we look here, we are going to do the exponent law as it's written, which is keep the base and subtract your exponents from the top down. Same thing with the c's. So on this step, I've reduced the 4 over 8 to a half. I have written the exponents up here with the sign numbers so that we don't make a mistake on those. This will be negative 4 minus, because we're supposed to subtract, negative 1. There are two negatives in a row, which I'm going to change to plus. On this one, will be keep the base of c, start with the 4, minus, because that's what the rule says, negative 9, which also goes to plus plus. Negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3. 4 plus 9 is 13. So on this next step, we've just got that, those answers put together. 1 half, a to the negative 3, c to the 13. Now I'm going to look at the outside and distribute this negative 3 all the way through the parentheses. It has to go to everything, the 1, the 2, and the a, and the c, so that it's going to say 1 to the negative 3, 2 to the negative 3. Use your exponent law and multiply those exponents, which gives you a positive 9. Multiply those exponents, which gives you negative 39. And this is the part that students get into trouble with when they use this method if they're not careful. You have to think about what the definition means here. 1 to the negative 3 is going to tell us to switch this to the bottom. 2 to the negative 3 means we're going to switch that to the top. Now, I did revert back to my rule because that's going to be easier than the other, which I will show you. But here's the 2 to the third on the top, the 1 to the third on the bottom. I've also taken the c to the negative 39 and sent it to the bottom. All that's left then is just to clean up that 2 to the third, which is 8. Now, if you weren't using my switch things to the opposite place, what you'd have to do is simplify this coefficient. Well, 1 to the negative 3, that's convenient. 1 to the any power stays 1, so I can leave that 1. But 2 to the negative 3 would be a 1 over 2 to the third in the denominator, which brings us back to earlier in the video where we have 1 over a fraction which really means 1 divided by that fraction. I will write 2 cubed as 8 instead. That's a little bit easier. 1 divided by 1 eighth means 1 times 8, which is the reason the 8 came to the top. So even if you don't want to do all of my switching around of things, at least at this step with the negative exponents, switch those, and it would be just a little bit easier for you. So this is the second method. You can use it if you feel pretty comfortable with your sign number rules and if you don't make a mistake with the coefficients. The common mistake on these kind of problems is for people to take the negative 3, multiply it by 2, and call the coefficient a negative 6 on the bottom, which it is not. You are raising 2 to the negative 3 power. And that's why I teach it the other way first, because I think that's the safer way for you.